is ready to come out. This cluster is now free. Stepper motor. Start Ooh. by uh, moving the old. You now have a fully freshly rebuilt cluster. Wow. <laughs> Do you drive a GM vehicle and maybe one or more of your gauges isn't working right or at all? In my case, I drive a 2005 GMC Envoy and the speedometer has been acting really funny lately. And it's now to the point where it's completely failed. It's not working at all. You know what? Let's head to the Envoy and I can show you what I'm talking about. Oh, and if you want a quick and easy way with practically no effort at all to fix this problem, stay tuned to the end of the video or you can just skip there now if you want. You can see here, before I even start the car, it's sitting at about six miles an hour. Let's see what happens when I start it up. Well, I just started the vehicle and hopefully you were able to tell that these gauges should reset themselves. And one interesting thing that I totally did not plan is this gauge here. This gauge seems to have just failed in the last day since I've driven this vehicle. My voltage is certainly not over 19, but again, this is a common failure with these GM gauge clusters. So I started this video wanting to show you my frozen speedometer and lo and behold, my voltmeter is now fried. Go figure. Let's talk about the fix. Back to the Envoy. The way we're gonna fix these gauges permanently, well, as permanent as it can be, is actually by removing the cluster itself and sending it in to a professional. Now don't fret, this is actually much more simple and cost-effective than it sounds. And you're gonna have a professional looking over the entire cluster and possibly identifying other problems as well. This will not only save you time, money, but also future frustration. So let's get started. There are only a few screws we have to remove to get to the screws that hold the actual cluster in. Let's go ahead and start with these first two screws we see up top here. For that, I'm just gonna use this short Phillips head screwdriver. After these two Phillips screws are out, we're gonna move down below the steering wheel where you'll find two more screws, one here and one on the other side, and both of these are seven millimeter. I'm gonna use something like this to remove those, but you can also use a ratchet. With these two screws removed, we should be able to just pop this panel down just like that. And here on the other side, we're gonna leave it hanging like this for now as it's good enough for what we need to do. The next step is simply removing two more Phillips head screws, one here and one on the other side. And after tilting the steering wheel down as far as it'll go, this whole inner bezel should be able to slide out very carefully. One quick note, make sure not to lose these little rubber end bushings that go on these tabs. Now we can see the bezel-less cluster. We can see the blue electrical connector right there at the top center. And there are also four seven millimeter screws we're gonna have to remove. Okay, I've now removed all four screws. There's two here and two on the other side and this bezel is ready to come out except we have to remove this electrical connection up here. Okay, I've pulled the bezel out and just kind of turned it so you can see this clip here. Should be able to just press the blue tab and pull the clip and remove it just like that. This cluster is now free. So what do we do now? Well, I found a guy, not just anybody. This is the guy. The guy's name is Jeff, and in fact, he's got a YouTube channel where you can check out his work. His channel is called Jeff Escort LX, and I'll link all of that down in the description box below. And that's initially how I found him. I was actually searching YouTube a while ago because my 03 Suburban is also having instrument cluster issues. I came across his channel and I was shocked at the professionalism and the quality of his work. Go to his channel, check out a few of his videos, and I think you will easily agree with me. So I contacted him about my Envoy, and he said, send it over. Now, full disclosure here, we agreed to do a trade with this one, so he didn't charge me for this repair. But I do plan on sending him the cluster from my 03 Suburban and paying full price for that, and I think it's worth every penny. So I packaged it up, sent it off, and this is what happened. Well, Jimmy. You're a YouTuber with a fleet of GM vehicles, and I'm a YouTuber that fixes GM clusters, so we both know it's just a matter of time before our paths crossed. But the big question on everyone's mind is, what is my shipping department up to? Well, cat, does this box get the pass? 
I think that's a yes. Before I dig too deep into it, we'll just see how bad it got. A little noisy. It's got the original tired stepper motors in there. We'll just see how well it can do a full counterclockwise sweep and definitely getting some uh, some crunchy action out of the speedometer so I can see how you've been having trouble with that. Okay, so here at room temperature, it was able to do a full counterclockwise sweep, but as the stepper motors are failing, usually the cold weather is when they start to show up as bad. So I can see why now at room temperature it's working, but it's right on that border of now temperature dependent to work. So let's dig in. We'll do a bulb check, all the faces up, just to see if you had any burned out bulbs. They're all getting replaced anyways. I think you only had like 36K, yeah. So bulbs are gonna be fine, but we're gonna replace them anyways. But hey man, 36K, that's really low for uh, for this year of vehicle. So that's, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna start by uh, moving the old stuff motors. These are the crummy XC5s. Not very good. Next, the backlighting bulbs are gonna go. I'm gonna leave the blinkers and cruise control alone. They don't need to be messed with, just the backlighting. And this is a revision of, of Trailblazer and Unvoy. There's actually multiple revisions depending on year and whether or not you have the driver info display. But these resistors here will need to be reflowed because they will eventually fracture and crack if you uh, give it enough time. So it's just a preventative measure to go ahead and reflow these. So these group of resistors here are responsible for the vacuum fluorescent display, uh, the hot wire circuit. They just kind of pull a continuous current, but uh, that over time, mixed in with heating and cooling and vibration and all the fun automotive stuff, they will eventually fracture. And as they fracture, you would notice your displays would kind of get dimmer and dimmer over time. So by getting some nice leaded solder in here, that will prevent that from happening. Come in! <laughs> uh, let's get these new lamps mounted. Another step in uh, cluster rebuilding is to inspect the backside because that is usually where the corrosion will start. Now this board is pretty well conformally coated, but uh, we still have to watch out for corrosion and it starts especially in these vias here. And this board is well pretty dang good because it only has like 30,000 miles on it. No problems here. Now for the new motors. These are the X27.168. These are the upgraded stepper motors that won't fail like the originals do. Now with the new motors, it's a little bit more smoother and quieter. At this point, I'm gonna let this run for a little while. I just give the lamp some burn in time just to make sure we're not gonna end up with a dud. Now for reseating the needles. So not only is the position of the needle important so the calibration is correct, but the height that you set the needles is also important because if the needles push down too hard, you'll end up with the needle dragging on the face. And if it's up too high, you'll get uh, some light leakage from the lamps and also possibly uh, the needle could just fall right off if it's jarred hard enough if it's not seated all the way. So I'm checking the start positions after everything settles out and I have to reposition my mile per hour. I'm down a little bit too far, but temp is right on. Uh, gas is supposed to be one notch below, so we're good there. I just need to tweak the mile per hour. Yep, 
And I might make an adjustment to the RPM too. It's about a half a needle width below where it should be. After some slight tweaking, I'm now happy with not only the start positions, but the needle depth. All right, Jimmy. You now have a fully freshly rebuilt cluster. Wow! Did you guys catch all that? He is a master at his craft. And let me tell you, this was nothing compared to what I've seen on his channel. He recently had a cluster that had mouse pee damage. Yeah, mouse pee. It was deemed irreparable. That is until he got a hold of it. His ability to diagnose and find the problem and perform a long-term fix is second to none. Guys, I'm telling you, if you have any sort of cluster issues at all on your GM vehicles, or for any vehicles for that matter, you gotta give Jeff over at Auto Tektronics a call. All of his info is linked down below. He is the guy you wanna talk to. And here's my cluster. I just received it back a few days ago and it looks great. What do you say? we get this thing reinstalled in the Envoy. Wow. Taking a look at this cluster just out of the plastic, it looks fantastic. And you can see on the bottom here, he's marked the date, indicating also that he's done a full rebuild. Okay, to get this reinstalled, I'm first going to slide the cluster in and reconnect this electrical plug. Now I'm going to put this back into position and the cluster is now fully seated. I just need to secure it back with the four screws. Okay, I now have the cluster plugged in with the four screws securing it. The last thing I need to do is reinstall this trim piece. Okay, this thing should fit in there pretty evenly. If you have to force it, you're probably doing something wrong. It looks like we got the screw hole there. So this is going just fine. And on the bottom of this bezel, we do have two screw holes, one on this side and one on the other. It's gonna take that. And last but not least, we have this bottom panel here, which should just pop right back into place. Well, all right, we are completely put back together and the only thing left is to test it out. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the key in. Turn it on, turn off my blinker, and we'll see what happens here. Wow, looked great. All the needles are certainly where they should be, which means the stepper motors are doing their job. Okay, here is another official start after the fix from Jeff over at Auto Tektronics. Awesome. My voltmeter and speedometer are in exactly the right spot. Let's take this thing for a drive and see how they perform. All right, everything looks like it's performing as it should. This is a fantastic sign. Well, Jeff, I have to say, everything looks fantastic and is performing flawlessly. Thank you so much for the work that you've done on this cluster. I now know how fast I'm driving. And that brings me to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really does help. Also, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And don't forget to check out Jeff's YouTube channel at Jeff Escort LX. I will link it down below. And if you don't know me, I'm Jimmy. The channel is One Road, and I will see you in the next one. I'm going to go ahead and turn the vehicle off and show you one quick and easy method to try to remedy this. So like I was saying, as you turn that key, the gauges attempt to reset themselves. This voltmeter seems to be stuck in entirely the wrong position. Now, if I take this key and turn it to the run position, and just before I go to actually start it, I'm just gonna turn it a fraction of an inch. There you could see the gauges tried to reset themselves. I'll do it again. And I'll do it again. And you can see this is a very, very slow process, but it does reset the gauges ever so slowly. You might have to do this quite a bit to get that gauge to reset fully. But again, this is just a Band-Aid, a very short-term solution to something that really should be fixed professionally. For now, let's try to reset this gauge completely. So as I turn this key, I'm not starting it. I'm just 
clicking it over a little bit. And every time these gauges are resetting themselves little by little. If we continue on this process multiple times, and there I accidentally started the car, so I'll have to turn it off again. But it does look like at this point, it is showing the correct voltage. Let's see what happens if I turn the vehicle off. There we go, no rhyme or reason, but it seems that setting that gauge, that voltmeter, below what it should be when it's running, it seems to have fixed the problem. If we look at all the gauges, including my speedometer, they now seem to be set at zero, where they should be. All right, my voltage seems to be okay, although the gauge still seemed like it was struggling a little bit. So again, this was just a very simple band-aid to the real problem. And that real problem is that the stepper motors behind these gauges are actually failing. By doing this key method, the gauges have reset themselves into the proper position. But this is definitely a very temporary fix. In my case, give it about a couple of days to a week and the speedometer will completely fail again. I'm actually quite surprised that I was able to get it to actually function today because it wasn't working at all for the past couple of days. I had no idea when I came out to film this video that my voltmeter actually failed also. So that was a nice surprise. So if you want a very quick and easy band-aid to try to get your gauges to work again, this key method is the trick.